So let's talk about battery blocks. What are they? Well, battery blocks are a way of assembling 18650 cells that does not require spot welding or soldering. What's an 18650 cell? This is an 18650 cell. This is the most commonly made battery size in the world. It's 18 millimeters by 65 millimeters. This is the size that the Tesla automobile company uses in their cars. So I've come up with a way of taking these cells and assembling them in modular packs. What this means is that if a one cell goes bad out of your battery pack, you can repair it. You don't have to throw the battery pack away. It also means that when your cells wear out, you can take the battery pack and rebuild it. Just put new cells in and save a lot of money. It means that you can take these cells and distribute them to various parts of your project if you want. It's not hard to do a split battery pack. And these cells are beautiful looking when they're done. They give a real artistic, a cool look to your battery project. Furthermore, they teach you about cell wiring and battery wiring. By the time you get done with this, building one of these, you will have a battery that you understand and that you know how to repair and diagnose. When you start to assemble a battery, any battery, you begin by assembling cells into parallel groups. For example, all the positive terminals of these would be spot welded together, and all the negative terminals would be spot welded together, and you would have created a group of cells that are wired in parallel. Wiring in parallel multiplies the amperage of the cells. So, if these were 3 amp hour cells, you now have 6 times 3, or an 18 amp hour cell does not multiply the voltage, the voltage stays the same. So if this is a 4 volt cell, by wiring them this way, you would have a 4 volt, 3 times 6 is 18 amp hour cell. But let's see how battery blocks does the same concept. Here is the same group of 6 cells. They're held together with magnetic compression. That means that you can easily disassemble them if you make a mistake and this cap wires them all together because it's a steel connecting plate. So you have a steel connecting plate that does the same thing. That magnetically wires all these pieces together. To secure the plate better than the magnets, there's through bolts that go through and they go through to the top and the bottom plate. And that provides compression when you tighten the nuts. These come in a number of different sizes, so you can wire different cell groups together. This is six cells in parallel. That's medium sized. The smallest one is four cells in parallel. There's an eight cells in parallel. And here's the ten cells wired in parallel. This is the biggest size that we make currently. So, how do these things assemble together? So, let's take a couple of these six cells. Let's suppose that you want to wire not six cells in parallel, but twelve. You notice how they're color-coded? The red is for the positive, the black is for the negative. So, if you wanted to wire these in parallel, you need to connect the positive to the positive, and negative to the negatives. So, you just invert them. You have these little tabulation marks that help you assemble them, get the alignment right, and then you just put a connector in, like this. The connector is just a simple piece of steel with some holes bored in it. Horse holes bored in it. <laughs> and you put the connection bolts through when you want to tighten it up. And, great, now you've got these two groups of cells. Now you've got 12 cells wired in parallel. But you don't want to wire these in parallel. Let's say you want to wire them in series. No problem. Now by connecting these together in the same way, you will have doubled the voltage and wired them in series. And it goes on and on. You can connect any number of these together to create the voltage multiplier or to create the amperage multiplier. They not only connect front to back using these tabs, they also connect side to side, like this. And I'll tell you why that's important in a moment. They connect side to side using these metal plates here. So you would just slide a metal plate in, slide a metal plate in. It's really pretty easy. 
line up the holes, tighten the bolts, and now you've got them connected side to side. Well, why does that matter? It matters because you see these holes right here? All these holes are designed to, um, be, to mount the battery cases to your project. For example, here's a battery a pack that's been assembled. You can see that these are groups of six cells and they're wired in series. And there's a piece of threaded rod that goes through all these holes up on top, comes out the other side, and these nuts tighten down. And when they do, uh, they lock the whole project together, making it very firm and rigid. Here's another example of that. This one's built with 10S battery packs. And you can see the rods that go through that lock everything together. This is a very, very solid, mechanically strong um, product. But there's another way of mounting them, too. Let's suppose that you're building a power wall. Let's suppose that you want to take these guys and you want to mount them to the surface of something. Oops, let's get the same cell counts. Like this. What you do is you put screws or bolts through these holes, mount them like this to the project, and you can stack them all up and create a power wall. You know, a power wall of any size that you need it to be. So you can um, create these in different formats. Um, these battery blocks are also um, balancing agnostic. And what I mean by that is that you can balance them using either a BMS, or you can also balance them, my preferred way, using a hobby charger. On this battery, we've got the, it's got 10 cells, 10 groups of cells wired in series, so it's a 10S battery, 10 cells in series, and this creates a 36 volt battery. This would be about the right size for a modest electric bike, and the cell groups come down here to this pair board, and the pair board, you can connect this pair board to your hobby charger, and you can um, connect this into the power of the hobby charger or to a bulk charger. You can also replace this with the BMS. Once you've got the sensor wires, sensor wires wired, you can pull these out and hook this up to a BMS if you choose. So you can balance charge these batteries in a number of different, in two different ways, using a BMS or using a hobby charger. So that's an overview. But one more thing I want to show you. I want to show you that these are also artistic. I mean, they're they're cool looking. Let's let's back up and take a look at this guy. So here we have a group of one, two, three, four, five cells, and um, these cells can be mounted, you know, on a project, and they can be cool looking. So you can do cool things and mount these battery blocks, you know, in our in creative and artistic ways.